Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Marks and Reviews and How To. And on today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the Thermalright Aqua Elite 360 V3 onto the Intel LGA1700 or LGA1851 socket. In this particular instance, we'll be using the Intel Core Ultra 7 265K. And also we've got an ASUS motherboard. So we're going to go through the whole installation process, how to set up the motherboard, how to install the pump and how to put it inside of a case as well. Potentially your case may be different from this one and also your motherboard and processor might be different, but hopefully this video will give you some idea of how it all goes together. Okay, so first of all, let's introduce the parts that will be needed for this particular installation. So thermal paste, optionally, you can use that or you can use your own should you wish to. You'll need the Intel backplate, which is marked in bag C, the two Intel brackets, which are marked in bag B, four push through screws marked bag E, You'll also need the four retention thumb screws. The bag on that isn't actually marked with any letter, but it should be pretty obvious which one it is. And in terms of plastic mountings from the packaging, you'll need the blue color coded ones. So that is the small ones, which are part number F, and the slightly bigger ones, which are bag letter H. Okay, so let's get the bracket ready. Sorry about the contrast on the black background. So essentially what we wanna do is put through the pins and secure them with these plastic washers. When it comes to the actual section here, you want to use the outermost one, so the inner one, which is there, that is for the LGA 11.5X and 1200. If you push it back out and put it towards the end one, which uh, hopefully you can just about see there, so there is a small gap on the inside. So this is now in the LGA 1700 and also 1800. So when you've got that pushed through, grab one of the blue plastic washers and push that over, and then that should lock it into place. It's not a brilliant solution, to be honest with you, but it kind of works, and the compression, when it's all tightened up, should be fine. So just do all four of the corners. If you want to, you can push it down onto a surface to hold it in place. Put the washers over the top. Make sure they're all in the outside edges and push the washer over and that should lock it all into place. When these are tightened up, they will kind of firm up and compress themselves. So if yours are a little bit wobbly, like ours are, don't worry about it too much. It should be absolutely fine. Just make sure it's not too wobbly. Otherwise they may jump into the inner position. So that is the bracket completed. So what you want to do is to put that actually underneath your motherboard. So if we look at our motherboard, you'll notice there are four holes around the CPU socket. And essentially what you want to do is to drop the bracket through there. So if we turn the motherboard over, hopefully you can see the holes a little bit better there. And with this, if you want to be uh, neat about it, you can have it so the writing is the right way up. It doesn't really make a great deal of difference. And just line up and let it fall through the holes. So essentially what it does, it gives you a little bit of space in and the plastic protects the motherboard. So if you hold that in place whilst twisting the motherboard over, and you should see it's held in place like so. So now you've got the standoffs poking through the motherboard. So next take your parts bag, which is parts bag H, and with one of these over each one of the standoffs or pass-throughs. Next, we're gonna take our Intel brackets bag with the letter B on it. And these essentially can go either way. So depending on how you want to mount your pump, you can make that decision now. In the normal section, the pump actually has the connections at the top and the bottom. But if you wanted to, you could have it rotated 90 degrees and have it the other way round. That is entirely up to you, depending on your cable management and the way you want to have it laid out. So you can have it like that, so they're parallel with the RAM, or alternatively, you can have it on this top section and also at the bottom, so it runs parallel with the heatsink and also the M.2 and GPU. Realistically, it makes no difference because it is a square layout anyway, but yeah, you can make those decisions yourself. 
So the next part is to grab the parts bag J, which hopefully you can just about make that out there. This has got the thumb screws on, and the thumb screws just go over the top of these four pillars. So put the thumb screws on. There doesn't have to be any particular method of which ones you put on first and which one goes where. They will all need to be tightened up until they go right to the very bottom. And I would certainly suggest, even though they are thumb screws, they do have a crosshead design on them. So you can, if you wish to, use a screwdriver just to get the, uh, the correct torque. So if you want to use a screwdriver after, you'll notice they will go down quite a little bit further. When you do this, I would do opposing sides just to make sure that the back plate is completely flat. It should be anyway, because the plastics are pretty rigid, so there isn't a lot of give in it. So there you go. That is the bracket setup and the motherboard setup. So the next thing to do is to install the radiator actually inside the PC tower, and then we can connect to the pump and all of the other connections onto the motherboard. Okay, so at uh, this point now, we're now ready to install the radiator into the chassis. Now, depending on your chassis, if you've got plenty of room over here, at the top section of your motherboard, so there's a little bit of clearance, then you can do the wiring after, because it's gonna be still accessible. On this particular case, when the radiator is actually put in place, it does cover up a lot of these ports. So do whichever way you want to. Ideally, identify on the motherboard where the ports are. So on this one, CPU fan header is this one up here, and then the AIO is here, and our RGB is on the side, or there's ones on the bottom. Your layout may be very different from this, but certainly the CPU header and AIO pump header should be in this area around here. So just do check with your motherboard so you know which one you're plugging into. Now, what I would suggest to do, if you don't have a lot of room, is to get the pump and the cables and just basically put it roughly in place so you can pull it through these holes at the back here, however you see fit, and just kind of work out where they're gonna end up doing. Also, when it comes to the fans on the radiator, there's three on this one, you may have two if you've got the smaller version. These will be daisy chained, so my suggestion would be to take one of them on one side, so that's gonna be your three pin, five volt adjustable RGB and pass through, and the same for the fans, so four pin PWM and the pass through. Just take those over to one side and choose which one's gonna be the longest. Daisy chain them already, so just plug these all together. Or potentially, you can if you want to, if you've got enough holes at the back of your motherboard or the case, just pass them through roughly where they are and then do all the wiring at the back. Whichever way you do it, it's absolutely fine. There isn't a right or a wrong way. It just depends on which is best for your specific case. So next thing to do before we put the wires through, just make it easier for ourselves, just apply some thermal paste onto your CPU. With the Intel system, it's quite a big IHS, so you can put a, a decent amount of thermal compound on there. If you want to, you can go ahead and spread the paste so you've got even coverage. That is entirely up to you. So what I've done here is I've passed through the cables from each one of the fans, so we've got one, two, three, and I've just passed the cables roughly in line of where they're gonna go. So what you can do then is you can actually lift the radiator as one unit, and as you're doing that, you can gently feed through the cables as you're going. So then when you pull up to the top, pull all your cables through and it's nice and neat. So then you can put some screws into the radiator in the top. So for this section, I've actually put the uh, the computer down on its side, just so I don't have to fight with gravity. And what you can do is just get one screw started, and do it up reasonably tight. And then if you go to the exact opposite other corner, and we'll put a screw in there as well. Don't do it all the way up. And then what that will do is it will allow you to have a little bit of movement from side to side, should you wish to kind of balance things up or just to make it look a little bit neater. Sometimes, in some cases, because the holes aren't particularly well lined up, you could get one of these sort of more central ones done. So that is locked in place. Again, just do whatever suits you and just attach all of the screws to hold it firmly in place. And there are all the screws firmly attached. Okay, so that is the cables passed through from the back here. So there is from one fan, there is from the other, 
and there it is from the last one. So what you'll wanna do is just to daisy chain all the cables together. So have it so that you've got the one that plugs into the motherboard at one side, and then these can be daisy chained together. They just push together on the pass through and just do that for all three fans. And also then do the same for the addressable RGB. Again, having the female plug at the end also with this, make sure that the last one on the chain has the plastic cover over it to prevent any short circuits from the system, or potentially you can connect this up to other devices when you're done, if you need to connect up more on one daisy chain. Alternatively, you can also use the included little fan hub splitter, but it's a little bit pointless and just adds more bulk to the system. Use it if you want to, choice is yours. If you do use it, just plug in each one of your fans into the ports on here and then you finally plug this one into the CPU fan header. So now we can actually attach the pump to the CPU. So just hold the pump head with one hand, and if you line up the screws, do one at the top possibly first of all, and just do a couple of turns just to get it started. And then with the one at the bottom, you might need to apply a little bit of pressure just to start the thread off. And once it's connected, then just do alternate screws. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And just keep on doing that until it bottoms out. And that is the pump attached. So now with the pump cables, you have a PWM and addressable RGB. Again, just pass those through however you see fit and then connect those to the ports on your motherboard. And hopefully there, there's a little bit of a close up. So we've got the CPU fan header, which is the radiator fans, which is on the connection there, dead center. Next one is CPU optional, which we've left blank. And the next one along there is the AIO pump. So that is the main connectivity, so that's great. And also just to the side here, there is our addressable RGB. Sorry for the, uh, the poor quality shots, but that is the addressable RGB plugged in for the pump itself. And down here at the bottom, I'm using one of the additional headers on the motherboard to connect up all the RGB for the fans. So that should be pretty much everything. So there you go, there is the Thermalright Aqua Elite V3 360 installed into our computer system there with our Intel processor. Hopefully the video has been useful to you. If it has been useful and you like this type of content, make sure to hit the thumbs up button also, if you want to see more content of this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and also that chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. And of course, as always, if you've got any problems or questions, leave them in the comments section below. Or alternatively, head over to our Discord and we'll do our best to help you out however we can. But I think that's going to pretty much wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews now too. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.